we're taking a look at circular motion today. We've talked about this circular motion. We had uniform circular motion where something's going at a constant velocity around the circle. And remember that circumference over period tells us the speed that's going around the circle. But the biggest thing here is their circular motion applies to a lot of cases, not just constant uniform circular motion. We also have the case of anytime something's turning because there's some sort of turning radius, even if that's changing. You know, when you go in a loop-de-loop -loop in, a, in a roller coaster, at the top, it's doing circular motion. As it goes over the top of a hill, it's doing circular motion as it travels in a circle. And I think you guys remember, we talked about if something's moving in a certain direction and there's an acceleration in the same direction, that speeds it up. Acceleration in the opposite direction slows it down. Acceleration perpendicular causes it to turn, and it causes it to turn in a circle. And if we remember that acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is equal to v squared over r. So I've got for you a little chant. This has been passed down through the generations of physics teachers, and uh, I wanted to share it with you. It helps you remember some of the stuff about circular motion. Uh, there are some hand signs as well to it. Uh, so I would like you to watch this, follow along, learn this one. Uh, a couple things I want to start off with before we get there. There's some sign language in this. I've got to show you a couple symbols. We've got F. This is the symbol for F. Uh, it's kind of like the OK symbol. Um, if you look at it like this, it kind, kind of looks like an F. Yeah. OK. We've got uh, R. So just kind of cross your fingers like this. OK. We've got M this way. And these can be done with, the, with either hand as you're going through. M, like this. And so this kind of looks like a lowercase letter M. And A is just like that. So M and A. Uh, I think those are most of them. We also do this for V. Backwards number two. This would be a two. This would be a V. And there's not really a symbol for, for pi. So for pi, we kind of do it this way. Okay? Like a Pi symbol, okay? So just follow along with this, uh, and then I'm gonna see how you can do with it. So here we go. Okay, circular motion requires a force centripetal towards the center. Okay, so that's the first concept there. Circular motion requires a force centripetal towards the center. And now, F equals MA, but A is different. It's V squared, V squared, over R. And so this is the main concept of circular motion. We'll go through it again there. Circular motion requires a force, centripetal, towards the center. F equals MA, but A is different. It's V squared over R. All right, so hopefully you got that part under control. This is the thing to remember. Anytime something's turning, we can use circular motion to figure it out if we know something about the radius that it's turning at. So if we're looking at the bottom of a, of a hill, the top of a hill, as something's turning, as a car is turning, even if its radius is changing or its velocity is changing, at every instant, the acceleration is V squared over R. So that's the first whole part of this. Now, let's take a look at the second half of this chant. Uh, now, this is the way that it goes. V equals 2 pi r over t, because that's the circumference divided by the period. So V equals 2 pi r over t, and then we can put it together. And what we wind up with is A equals 4 pi squared r over t squared towards the center. And this is the whole thing. This is our circular motion chant. I'll do the second half again, and then we'll put the whole, whole thing together. So here's what we talk about circumference over, over time, and that that all gets put together into this other equation. So we've got now... Uh, v equals 2 
pi r over t, put it together, and we get a equals 4 pi squared r over t squared towards the center. All right, so let's put it all together, follow along. I'll go through once slowly and once a little bit quicker. Uh, here we go. Ready? Okay. Circular motion requires a force centripetal towards the center. F equals ma, but a is different. It's v squared over r. v equals 2 pi r over t. Put it together and we get a equals 4 pi squared r over t squared towards the center. There we go. One more time. Full speed. Ready? Okay. Circular motion requires a force, centripetal, towards the center. F equals ma, but a is different. It's v squared over r. V equals 2 pi r over t. Put it together. We get a equals 4 pi r over t squared towards the center. There we go. So I'd like you to make a video of this uh, chant yourself. Make sure that you kind of internalize these ideas that circular motion does require a force. It has to be a centripetal force towards the center of the circle, even if it's not a full circle, if it's just a partial arc. And uh, we're gonna have some practice problems that deal with this. And remember, you know, an object swinging on a pendulum, that's circular motion. Uh, somebody running in a circle, obviously would be circular motion, but an oval would be considered circular motion, but it's not uniform circular motion, each part of it, or I guess an ellipse. You know, when you talk about orbit, that can still be described by circular motion. And so it's a combination of uh, tangential acceleration and perpendicular acceleration that makes something move, speed up, slow down, and turn. And acceleration doesn't mean speeding up and slowing down. It also includes turning. So just keep that stuff in mind as we look forward at mechanics. This is one of the things that confuses people the most and that we kind of just forget about near the end of the year. So I wanted to do this review. Thanks.